the fabric placed on a 45 degree angle, exposed to a lighter at the bottom for one second, and timed how long it takes for the flame to reach the top. We compare all these and figure out which one's the most flammable. I like it. The guy on CSI that gets set on fire was wearing a flannel shirt. Now, what is flannel? Well, in the early days, it was a wool material. Then it was a wool blend. Now it can be virtually any kind of material that is thick and sort of fluffy and has this plaid pattern. So from natural fibers comes cotton to acrylics and acetates, the guys put the torch to some hopefully flammable fabrics. All right, let's try a rayon. Some take their own sweet time. 45 seconds. And that's it. Some just refuse to catch fire. <laughs> no burning at all from wool. And others burn up like a trail of gunpowder. Dude, fleece burns with vigor. Bang, that's, it. that's right there, 15 seconds. Now all that remains is to find out the fastest. The results are in. We have burned eight kinds of fabric, gotten eight different burn times, and the winner, it turns out, is a tie at 15 seconds. The fastest burning fabrics are both acrylic and fleece. Robert, tell them what they've won. Thanks, Adam. Yes, today's two fabrics both win the chance to return to the game as real shirts, then get burned right down to their buttons in a winner-takes-all torch time trial. Back to you, Adam. In order to do that, I'm going to call upon all the skills I remember from home economics in fourth and fifth grade with Miss Cabanitas. I still remember a couple of things. Adam's not showing off. We just couldn't buy a plaid fleece shirt. So this is a homespun Savage original. But he will need some torsos to hang his designs on. That's where this guy comes in because I'm going to make a wire mannequin that looks roughly like this so we have something to hang him on while they burn. In just a few minutes, they both finish flirting with fashion, and they both seem enamored with their efforts. Show Jamie my threads. Check it out. Uh, who's your tailor, dude? I am my tailor. Hey, these are uh, one-time use. <laughs> these guys look great. Uh, meet uh, Bernie and his little brother, Crispin. So Bernie and Crispin get shirted up. One with a plaid that's all acrylic, and the other made from so-called fleece, another synthetic that's partly made from recycled plastic. At this point, you may be wondering if I'm upset about having worked so hard on this only to set it on fire. And the answer is no, because I'm doing it for science. And I'm setting something on fire. To comprehensively test the myth, the boys are eager to learn just how combustible a shirt can be. Both shirts are lit from the same point at the same time. Uh, right now, the acrylic really seems to be winning by a fair bit. It's much more aggressive. Indeed. It's also clear that both of these are burning relatively slowly. I mean, it's not a whoosh. No. I would hope it would not be a whoosh. I, I hope I don't have any clothes at home that would go whoosh. <laughs> With no pepper spray, both shirts burn slowly but consistently. Adam, of course, has a vested interest. Come on, fleece. After all our training, after all our discussion, is that all you got? You're going to let acrylic take you to town? You're going to let him show you up? Put something into it, man. But he's back the wrong blouse. Eventually, the acrylic is the first one to give up the ghost. I'm going to call it. Eight minutes, 25 seconds. The acrylic is completely burnt up to a crisp, and the fleece still has more than halfway to go. Yep. So acrylic it is. And here's the upshot. Shirts do burn. Stun guns can make a big spark. And some pepper sprays are totally flammable. Now all that remains is to pull these best case combustibles together to see if they can really make that instantaneous human fireball. This fine specimen of manhood here will soon be our perp for our final test. Now, in order to be a proper perp, I need him to have conductive skin. So I'm going to give him a layer of foam, and then I'm going to cover that foam with foil. And that foil will act as the conductive skin that hopefully will give us the spark to light our perp on fire. He's ready. And in hope of a blazing conclusion, it's back to Treasure Island. The methodology here is actually pretty simple. Our perp here is dressed in the latest fashion. 
the acrylic shirt that we found the most flammable. We are going to spray him down with the pepper spray we found most flammable, number four. And then I'm going to stand back with this stun gun and pop him right in the chest and see if he bursts into flame. All right, stand clear. So confirming the myth of an instant massive fireball all comes down to this. Just like they did on CSI, Adam unloads for a good few seconds. Please. Hey! Dude! It's burning. I'm totally, wow! It's totally burning! Huh. And we totally need the fire extinguisher. You have the right to not be on fire. Anything you burn can and will be held against you in a court of law. But do we have the right to call this confirmed? Of course, it wasn't quite the big fireball that we saw in CSI. But this being Mythbusters, we're going to do our darndest to get one. So they postponed the judgment, discharging four whole cans on a backup acrylic shirt. Think that's enough? No. <laughs> Just for good measure, Jamie almost doubles the dose. All right. Freeze! Nice! Oh, yeah! Now that's really close to the human bonfire we saw on TV. There's your fireball. <laughs> it's instantaneous. Look at that. Yeah, you might as well lit it with a match. Unbelievable. It's a fabulous fireball, but in this case, they did use an ocean of pepper spray. So how do we want to call this one? Well, let's do a little math. One acrylic shirt plus a can of flammable pepper spray plus one stun gun equals? Plausible. I agree. Uh, one acrylic shirt plus a stun gun plus a whole crop load of pepper spray equals? Gratuitous. That's our favorite four-syllable word. So the verdict on this myth is plausible.